Welcome back to video 3 of this 3D programming series. Alright, so let's get into this. We'll include the GLFW3. It doesn't see it. That's fine. Of course, we're going to switch this to what we built everything for. 64 and release. And this source file it started us out with has a little console hello world. So let's comment out this real quick and let's just make sure our hello world actually runs. Yep looks good hello world runs so let's go ahead and get our window popping up so we're gonna uncomment that we're gonna get rid of this hello world because we don't need it and we need to actually include this so we downloaded everything and, and built it and I did it all in my downloads folder but I think what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to include all this stuff into our project. So I'm going to go back here, right click on the top level, open folder in File Explorer, and here we are. You'll see it has two levels to it, like it starts out like this, and then if you go into it, it has your solution, it's the Visual Studio opener thing, and, and there's where your actual project is. And let's see this x64 on the root level, as your executable and some uh, pre-compiled stuff and the x64 in here has all your objects that you built from your CPP files. Cool. So we're going to go let's see, do we want to go in here? No, we'll, we'll stay back a directory. So we're going to be on the, on the root directory and we're going to make a folder called include and a folder called libraries. And within those, I'll move that to the side, we'll open another window here, go back to downloads, and let's start bringing in the stuff we need. Um, there's glad, I'll go ahead and do glad. So I'm going to click this, press Control c to copy, go over here, press Control v to paste, and it should dump into the include. Be careful not to actually select include, because that does something else. If I select include, it pastes it into include, and it'll make a subdirectory, which is sort of weird. And, well, maybe it's not, because it's offering to replace. OK, maybe it's not. I stand corrected. All right, so we got glad. Let's go ahead and do glfw3. We'll go in here, find include, copy it, come over here, paste it. Should be in there, it's in there. Very good. Now this one was one we built with CMake, so let's go into build, source, release, and we'll find a lib. So we're gonna also copy this lib and paste it into libraries. All right, and that's all we need for the moment. So we will go ahead and also include, I'll wait on the glad. We'll just get a window going first. As you can see, it still doesn't understand this because I need to point it, uh, point this project to the uh, include folder. So I'll right click on this, go to properties. You can also do this by going to project properties or alt F7, alt F7. And look for this VCC directories and you'll see include directories here and you want to just click this over the side edit click down here click this little button and you'll see it takes you right into the folder so maybe it would be better okay I'm gonna do some a little correction here I'm gonna take these cut them and just go another route deep so we're in here now all right so that way, because this seems to, uh, the reason I'm doing that is because this defaults to that folder when you click it. So it just makes it easier. So I'm going to click include, hit OK, include directories, got the include. Now as you can see, it puts this whole big path here. Instead of having this path, I'm going to put a little macro here in case I work on a different computer of solution dir. And of course that's with a, a dollar sign there and in parentheses solution dir no slash in between the first word of OpenGL demo so this basically paths all the way to that first level of my project and if I upload this to github and then download it with another computer it'll already have a correct path because of solution dir 
So that's kind of a cool thing you can do. Now we also want to take this library directories and do a similar thing. Just want to add a directory. There's all this other stuff, just leave it. It's your default things, default directories. But we want to add this library one to it as well. And it does the same thing, puts the C users, Cortana, et cetera, et cetera. And you can do the same thing of solution dir. And there we go. Apply. OK. Now it does see GLFW3. And we just need some code to get this going. I believe it's GLFW window star. We'll call it window. Um, I actually need to look up code for this. So we'll look at, uh, I could probably go to the GLFW site. Oh, they released a new version since the last video. That's cool. So there's lots of documentation here about what GLFW can do. And there's even a little sample code to get it going to begin with. So we could literally just copy and paste this and it would work. Let's do that. Copy. Apparently with later versions of C++, you no longer need return zero, which feels weird, but whatever. Okay, so there we go. We put in their default code, declare a window, initialize the library. Uh, we create our window. And if the window is looking good, we go past this. If not, so if it's, uh, I don't know how much I want to teach C++ in this, probably not a whole lot, but I'll, I'll say some basic things here and there. But in general, you'll probably need some C++ knowledge. So if you don't have C++ knowledge, it's very necessary for game development. And if you really want to, maybe I could do a tutorial someday, but this is not one you're expected to kind of know the basics. Uh, there's a lot of different guides out there to learn the basics of C++. I recommend going through them and learning some on your own. So basically what this says is, if not window, terminate. Because uh, I believe if you look up this function, whoa, okay, this is another cool thing about Visual Studio. If you hover over something, you get the full documentation on it. So this documentation here was developed from Doxygen. I can tell by the comment of the brief there and everything. So another point of Doxygen is to just have documentation right there in your code. You can see what everything does just by hovering over it. And a lot of these libraries will have markups like that, so that's that could be handy. So this will return null, and yeah, it'll it'll just terminate our application here with a return if uh, the window fails. So then we make the window our current context for building stuff into, etc. And then we enter a while loop and while the window while the window should close, except not, so while it's not closed, we go into our loop and this loop just goes over and over. It does a clear, which clears the screen, then it swaps the buffer because we're using a default double buffering, which is a pattern for development where you have your screen that's displaying currently and the one you're building and then you just swap them every time. So you build the scene, swap it, you take the one you just swapped back, you build stuff onto it. And that you can't, of course, tell when you're looking at it, but there's actually two screens that are being built and they swap back and forth. That way you have a back one to build onto while the previous one is showing. And when the back one's ready, you show it and it, it looks like a simulated update. It's essentially pictures showing over and over and you build the next picture. So it's just a double buffering pattern. You can read a lot more about it if you just Google search double buffering pattern on graphics libraries or OpenGL. It's always used because it's if you're updating the one that's currently showing, you'll get the uh, the scan line update and it'll look weird because uh, like half the screen will you probably won't be able to visually see it unless things are really slow, but when it updates, your monitor updates usually from top to bottom. So you want to do that not being seen, and then when it's ready, you want to show it. So that's the point of that. GLFW pull events, it, it looks for keyboard and mouse events. So you can set those up too with GLFW. And then at the end, we're going to terminate. So that's after you exit the loop. Let's go ahead and hit play on this. We should get a little window. We have some errors. 
what are our errors? It says, so these are important to know. It's important to analyze these errors. You're going to have errors when you're coding and building stuff, and you need to know how to address them. There, it's rather, rather important step because if you don't know, you'll get stuck and you'll have no idea what to do. So right, right off, it says, okay, we got our CPP. It turns it into an object, and then it has an error with the object. L and K is a link, so it's having a linker error, and it has unresolved symbols, which basically mean. Okay, it's having trouble with a linker, and then it tells you the symbols. The symbols are stuff from GLFW3. So what this means is GLFW is not linked. We need to link to GLFW. So we'll do that. That's an important step. We'll go back to our properties, Alt F7, and we'll go to linker, input, and we need to do this under dependencies. So you can click in dependencies here, click the little thing on the side, edit, and you want to add the libraries that you include, glfw3.lib. OK, apply, OK, try again. OK, build errors again. All right, let's take another look. We have a lot less. It's still having a linker error, but this one is no longer the glfw3. Instead, it's a mm, implementation of glclear. Glclear is from OpenGL. So we're having an OpenGL linker error. We need to link OpenGL. Let's do that. All right. So we go back to the same place. I pressed Alt F7 to bring this up. Linker input, and over here, go to Edit and OpenGL 32.lib, which your computer already has on it because you probably have your video card drivers. So you just hit OK and apply. There is no OpenGL 64. For example, if I, you would think it's 64, because hey, we're, I said we're doing all 64-bit stuff, right? It just doesn't exist, I don't think at least. Let's let's try though and see what happens. Build errors, still doesn't have it. It says cannot open input file. It doesn't even know what it is. So yeah, that doesn't exist. But I wanted to just do an example. Sometimes stuff will seem a little awkward to you, like why is it 32? We're doing all 64. Sometimes things are just how they are and you just need to follow the directions. That's, that's all I can really say. There's probably a better reason, but I don't know it. And there we go. Everything is now linked correctly. We have a hello world. Of course, it's just a blank screen because we haven't done anything. But you'll see that GLFW3 allows you to resize windows. And there's callbacks you can make to do special stuff with your screen when you resize. So you can build that into the logic of your game, what happens when you resize a window. We will get into that later, though. Okay, well thank you for watching my video, and I will catch you in the next one. Peace out.